your favorite gardening magazine, The Gardener and Detainee, turned 20 this February, and we're celebrating with a birthday collector's edition. Featuring the most loved gardens, stories from our gardening gurus, timeless garden plants, and our best DIYs. There's also a giant gardening hamper to be won, valued at over 75,000 Rand. Celebrate with us and get your collector's edition from leading retailers or online at thegardener.co.za. The Gardner Masterclass is proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, the foremost African commercial and home gardening specialist of globally sold premium seed and innovative gardening solutions. Growing together for a sustainable future and Macro Home and Garden. Visit macro.co.za to find out more about our range to solve most common gardening problems. macro.co.za Good morning, everybody. We're back. Yay, you raw! Been so exciting setting up this morning, getting everything ready. It's our first masterclass of 2023. Oh, and we got through January. Well, I don't know about you, but January felt like a whole decade. It just seemed to go on forever. But here we are, guys, and welcome to our first masterclass. Um, it's all about sassy succulents. Ooh, baby. What about, do you want to talk about turning me on and something that blows my skirt up? Well, we are right on target. We have got lots to show you, lots to share, some really interesting ones that are part of my little growing, you know, bit obsessing collection. But you know what happens? It's like when you start collecting thimbles. Before you know it, your whole house is full of thimbles or fridge magnets. Um shoes uh minor succulents and there is simply not a place that i can go to uh not a wherever but i come back with something whether it's hidden or in a pot or you get my drift anyway guys it's so so good to be here um let's have a look and see who's online we've got lots to go through this morning we've got troubleshooting we've got problems We've got repotting. We've got how to make your own mix. Um, some little secrets in between. How to make more, which we all want to, which saves us loads of money um, and is so incredibly satisfying. Um, remember, guys, that if you've got any questions, which you must send through, please, they are on the Gardener Facebook, the Gardener Facebook and on YouTube. Okay, right, so first of all, before we get going, oh, look, my computer, she's awake. <laughs> let's see who's here and let's say good morning. Catherine, good morning. Maddie, Maddie Madison Moulton, good morning. Tanya Vesma, good morning. Deirdre Wachter on YouTube from Jeffreys Bay. Very nice place. Um, Patsy. Um, Mm, who else have we got here? Avril, Avril Fundenbosch, good morning, good morning. Michelle DJ, uh, Marinda Hechter, good morning. Renata, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, good to have you back with us. Uh, morning from the Stark Airs team in Gauteng. Adele, good morning. Avril is here from Cowies Hill. Um, wow, guys. Uh, Atlantic Fertilizers, good morning team, good morning. Uh, Liz Bester from Hout Bay, um, Indira, Indira, good morning, Mwah! good morning. Uh, guys, it's wonderful to have you here. I see more people are coming on. Um, Anita Asad, good morning, good morning. And um, I see there are lots of congratulations and happiness and kisses uh, coming from, uh, from everybody. 
Uh, Robin, good morning. Sheila Scott from Cape Town. The Macro Home and Garden team, good morning. Um, uh, Wilden, Wilden um, from the nursery in Mossel Bay. Well done, guys. Well done. Good to have you on board. Um, and we've got Patricia that's joined us. Oh, okay, there's there's lots, there's lots there. So if at some point while I'm busy chatting, you hear a uh, oof, that is not a bomb going off or a power station once again blowing up. It is the figs that are falling on the garage roof, right? Okay, the garage roof. And let me tell you, it is super hot in here. Uh, but the figs, they fall and they sound like mini atomic bombs going off. Um, so if I jump every now and again, um, you know why I'm jumping. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, guys, okay, let's get straight into it. Um, we're talking beautiful succulents. And, you know, um, there's a, a little personal story here. I, I've always dabbled in them, you know, like I kind of, yeah, I dabbled. I dabbled um, because I was... Oh, it was a time thing, it was, it was that thing, time of your life, whatever, moments, reason, season, that thing. Anyway, COVID hit, ha ha, COVID hit. We worked from home, we were here for the entire 35 days or whatever it was, um, and I had a bit of time. And so I started fiddling around and, oh, you know what happened? I discovered online shopping. I discovered that you could buy succulents online. I also then discovered that there were auction sites and, and that there were these WhatsApp groups that, that you, you can, um, like, like, as the plant comes on, you're going to say, bought, sold, sold. And then you get so excited that you, you swap the wrong way and then you end up in Google Chrome or something and then the, the, and then the cell phone freezes and then you forget your password. And then I'm like, and the onions burned. Dinner burned. It burned. It burned to nothing. Because I was online. I was buying. And listen, the worst thing, my worstest, 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 I'm, I'm getting on an aeroplane from PE. This is a true story. I had put a bid in for a really good succulent and I was ahead in the game, head of the game, but the group was closing. The final bid had to be in at like two minutes. It was two minutes to five. Closing off was at five o'clock. I'm like, now, nah, oh, can't you be delayed? Can't this aeroplane be delayed? Like, oh. So I phone home, I say, get onto this group. If anybody gets above this bid, you bid and you take it. You take that plant, whatever happens. Oh, the stress. Oh, the stress. But anyway, hence, it became an obsession. Um, it's an obsession that I love. Why? Because I can do it a lot or I can do it just a little bit. I can get really stuck in for a whole day, or if I've only got 10 minutes, I can still wander around and still do something constructive. Um, whether it's rain or shine or whatever, because you can keep them on shelves, or you can keep them on your patio, or you can keep them even on your windowsill, you can still garden. You can still garden. And the reward of making more and knowing that you grew something from that is beyond is just beyond. Um, the fact that it makes me believe further that there is the most incredible higher power around us, because when you look at the symmetry, at the precision, at the, at the lines, at the shapes and the textures, you cannot help but wonder, how did this happen? Divine, and I talk divine. Um, so for me, it's been a wonderful learning journey. I have met beautiful people along the way. Um, you know who you are that have helped me. Um, uh, Martin, I want to say special thanks to, um, to Naresh, um, to the guys from Cambru. Uh, Sean, you, you guys have helped me all along the way and taken my love to, to a new level. And I know that you too can get that you too. 
Um, so let's see who else is here. Come, let's quickly see who else is here. And I'm talking so much now. Now I'm getting now I'm getting a dry throat. Anyway, to finish off on the the COVID thing, um, I then got given a little tunnel for my birthday. <laughs> well, one tunnel, two tunnels, three tunnels, four. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeehaw! Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> mm. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go here. Um, let's see. Uh, did it, did it, did it. Uh, Patricia's here. Yes. Okay, we've got some others coming on, but I think I'm clicking on the wrong page. Um, so let's go here. Con, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and we've got Beverly, who's also just joined us. And Shan, good morning from Howick. Right, guys, let's get into it. Where do they come from? Well, believe it or not, where we live in this beautiful country, many, many of the varieties. Um, are they worried that the water bottle's going to spill on my laptop? Oh, look here, look here. Oh, accident. <laughs> uh, many of the varieties which we have today as pimped versions or hybrids, and when we talk about hybrids, we are talking not in a laboratory, folks. We are talking about taking, come in and have a look here, taking the seed. If we have pollinated, cross-pollinated this little flower, the pollen from this, with maybe the pollen from this guy, when it was flowering, and we cross-pollinated with the tiniest, tiniest little one hair of a paintbrush, and then we got the seeds and we germinated the seeds and we waited for them to grow. That is how you get a hybrid, okay? There's no slicing and splicing of genetic, how's your father, woo woo. No, it's purely through crossing. Taking pollen, one mommy, one daddy, seeing what you end up with. Hmm, naughty sister. Okay, so that, and out of, the South African plants, which are these, our Hawortheopsis, our Gasterias, um, many of our sedums, there are thousands, and we are so blessed to have one of the most richest and most diverse species of succulents right here in South Africa, um, which is also just an amazing, an amazing blessing, because uh, this is where they originate from, right here. Of course, there's some others like the Echeverias, which come from the Mexicos, uh, which are just insane as well. Um, but most importantly, what we've got to know is, mm, what do we do? Why do we like them? And we like them because simply of their textures, the most amazing displays that you can create in the smallest of spaces. In the smallest, smallest of spaces. I mean, take a look here. I mean, this is, this is one pot. This is actually a bonsai pot. Um, it's got some cute little worms in it. Um, they're not real, by the way. <laughs> but you can take different textures and this little gasteria, this is a gaster aloe with a little sempervavum, some little hawortheas, a bit of gravel, and kind of throw it all together. Just throw it together. In, in this pot over here, which we made these concrete pots, really easy, guys. Um, We've put together a whole lot of different ones. So I've got one, two, three, four, five different species in one pot. So if space cannot be your issue, because in this little guy, which is about as big as, it's probably 40 centimeters across, 30 centimeters, one ruler, we have got so many different species. But it's when you start combining them, whether in the garden or whether in a display like this, with the beautiful agaves. Um, I mean, just look at this. Come in here. Mason, come in here. Come in here. Look at that pattern. Do you see that pattern there? Do you see that pattern? Now that pattern stays and it comes from actually the thorns. And as these plants start unfurling, and uncurling, they will always have the pattern. And that, for me, is like God's blueprint. Look inside this one. Look at this. This is a very, very special agave. And look at that. And those black thorns against the smooth terracotta. 
a grouping of pots. And it doesn't matter if it's plastic, if it's concrete, if it's terracotta, whatever it is, get your groupings right. Combine them and play around. And the great thing is that if you get bored with it, you just change it up because, you know, they're not permanent. So you can just like whip it around, move these things around, move it here, and all of a sudden, looks like you've got a whole new garden. Besides, in pots and in the garden, take a look here in this beautiful hanging basket. Here we've got some Ripsalis. We've got a little Crashula. No, there's a little sedum. He's called, um, I think he's called Tiny Man or Tiny Tim or something. A little variegated guy. And in a hot, sunny position where this guy comes from, fantastic. They're loving it. So hanging baskets is also an option. Um, a really, really good option. So when we're talking about arranging, think about texture. Just think about texture. And this is a good example. Here we've got some aeoniums, and I'm going to talk about them very quickly. So aeoniums, big, beautiful, sometimes saucepan size. In the Western Cape, where they love growing, which is hot, dry, these guys get to a dinner plate size. One day when I'm big, I'll be able to grow one to a dinner plate size. But this guy's got the most amazing name. He is called Aeonium Schweitzkopf. Schweitzkopf, blackhead, there he is. This guy over here, beautiful. And then you get the reverse of this. My all-time favorite has to be this beauty. Oh, I mean, come on, come on. This looks like you're looking through one of those kaleidoscope things, a kaleidoscope, and he is called Aeonium Medusa. Beautiful. And look, 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 look. Uh -huh. I got some babies coming along. Uh -huh. And just as well, because I've only got one of these, and by goodness, this thing is treated very, very well. All right. So what I want to show you here is you get your height, you get your texture, and then you combine it with something beautifully and fine. Look at this little Crashula. Look at the tiniest little flowers. This is Crashula exilis subspecies. And not only that, when it doesn't flower, look at the Nunu little spotted leaves. Mummy, isn't that gorgeous? I mean, textures. This is spectacular. Other ones that are amazing, which I have fallen in love with um, and only recently started like peering around and looking for are these guys. So take a look in here. Um, this is a Sempervivum. They're actually from the Northern Hemisphere um, and they best grown where it's semi-shade. If you put them in full, full sun, they generally become very, very small and quite stressed out. So semi-shade is best. So even on a patio, they actually do incredibly well. But this one has a wonderful name. It's called Sempervivum arachnoides. Think of arachnophobia, the fear of spiders, because this looks like a spider's web. Sempervivum arachnoides. And then you get all these different colors, ones that turn red ones that are almost lime green. And man, the more you get to play with them, the more you are going to want more. Yeah, no, it's an addiction, but it's fine. Like I say, there could be worse things. Okay, let's take a look here at some really interesting guys. These, this guy and this guy, look, he looks like little sticks. Like little, like, uh, yeah, little sticks. Yeah, looks like he belongs under the ocean, actually. Looks like it should be a bit of coral. These are called Ripsalis. Ripsalis, they do get a flower. The flower really is a bit insignificant. These are grown more for their beautiful shapes, and some of them actually have little hairs. And the little hairs, of course, are there to help reflect the harsh sun in the conditions where they originate so that they don't dry out. There's another Ripsalis, and then when we're talking hanging baskets, 
which is down here, look. A beautiful little crassula, um, tough as nails. And guys, if you can plant it, it can be in a basket. That's my rule. So whether it's semi-shade, whether it's full sun, um, these make beautiful permanent options. Um, and in terms of care and troubleshooting, well, I'm going to get onto that a little bit later. But what I really want to show you here is simply just options. Something that's become really popular, string of banana, string of dolphin, string of, I don't know, just now we'll have Pinocchio, who knows, but these are the string of bananas. Um, it's a Senecio and loves growing in semi-shade. So you're looking for a patio plant and it hangs like a curtain. Spectacular. Absolutely beautiful. And these were grown from cuttings. Like cut on one, push it inside. Okay, nothing fancy. All right. A group of succulents that are indigenous. Hail from right here in South Africa, all the way down the coastla coastline, up into Mapumalanga. You'll find it in the crevices, in the rocks, um, in those coastal forests are these, which are called gasterias. Now, this is a pimped one. <sighs> He's a beauty. Long, elongated leaves. And when you touch them, um, if you've ever had to touch a frog, it's, it's like that. They've got the most amazing textures and can grow in very, very low light. So as an option for indoor, dark patio, side of the house where it gets very shady, nothing's really growing, well, there's an option. Um, here's another little guest area. Look at that. Look at that variegation. That's spectacular. Now, for something, I'll show you up here, one of the most common guest areas to show that you don't always need to get the fanciest. Um, this is this guy's called Little Warty. Very, very common little guest area. But you'll notice the edges are pink. Look at that. You actually get a beautiful pink. And they get the most insane flower. The flower, when it is in flower, and I don't have one in flower here, which is quite a pity, the flower is in the shape of a human tummy. It's that shape. And gastro, you know when you get gastro, gasteria was named after our tummy because of the shape of the flower. Quite insane. And, and they are indigenous and available right here. Another indigenous, beautiful, is this beautiful little portulacaria. Um, this guy is the prostrata. What does that mean? He grows low. You can see him hanging over here. Of course, edible, yummy, mm, sour worms on a plant. Yeah, okay, I'm eating a whole bunch. But got this beautiful red stem, great for baskets, edges of beds, um, beds where it's, it's very, very cool um, and, you, and you battle to, to grow anything because you don't get enough sun there, that works. This guy will work. And of course, its big brother is the one that elephants eat, also known as the speck worm. Okay, right. Others. Let's get on to echeverias, which is probably like the most popular of all. Um, Echeverias, well, guys, you can't collect the whole lot because it's endless. This little guy is called Pollux. But the shapes and textures, the perfection is what attracts me to them. The perfection of nature. Um, they are simply irresistible. Um, and the colors that we are able to get them in, um, there's this weird and wonderful guy. Just look at those leaves. That's like insane. Come on, man. And then you get these very weird oaks who looks like, I don't know, like you ate something weird, but with the beautiful curly edges that pick up the pinks um, and are, are just absolute showstoppers, complete showstoppers. And then let's go up here to the dark. This is called marom. I mean, that is almost black, that, that echeveria. Easy to grow. A lot of people don't like to let theirs flower 
but I love to let it flower because look at the most spectacular flowers that will emerge. Um, they are incredible. The colours that will emerge from these echeverias are, are just too beautiful to not allow them to flower. This guy over here is one of my most ultimate special ones. He's called Echeveria Cante um, with this awesome grey foliage and he's got actually powder on him. So you can see the powder um, and it's a protective mechanism once again to, re um, to reflect the light, not to burn um, the leaves. Crashulas, Kalanchoes, Sedums, guys, it is endless, endless. And this is but a drop in the ocean. There's something else that I want to show you before we get into it is this over here. There's a space for everything. This is an indigenous Kawarthiopsis species and his name is Tani. He is, look at my finger, look how big he is. He is Nunu, minute, dinky, and perfect. Just perfect. Remember guys, as responsible people, as responsible gardeners, you do not harvest from the field, felt. Very, very recently, there was a South African couple who was arrested for smuggling a very rare World Heritage Site protected succulents out of South Africa. And we've seen on various magazine programs where our lithops, the little stone plants, all of those amazing plants are put into, into grain bags, many of which don't even get to where they get to, meant to go to, and they are destroyed. This is part of our heritage. This is part of who we are, so buy responsibly. Um, and that's very, very important, please. Okay, we've spoken about display. I've shown you some of the yummies. They're like, for me, it's like, oh, sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> sparkle, sparkle, got to have it, got to have it, got to go, got to go. Um, all right, let's talk about general care. General care of your succulents. What can go wrong? Um, if we're battling, how do we fix it? Okay, right, for that, I'm going to need exhibit uh, A, B, and C, a few of these. So let's get these out the way, these little guys. Um, and uh, let's show you what can go wrong. Okay. Now, not much can go wrong. Really not much. But when it does go wrong and you're not paying attention, hmm, it's gone to the compost heap in the sky. Okay, so let's talk first about fertilizing. Because even although they are in pots or they're in the garden, like any plant, they need nutrition. They need nutrition, and especially if they are in pots, guys, especially. So there are various ways you can go about it. I'm going to show you some very easy, quick ways that you can fertilize your succulents, whether they're in the garden or they are in pots. Now, remember, with all fertilizers, please remember, believe it or not, besides what I tell you, the instructions are all on the back, okay? I read these instructions, which I then give to you, okay? And in this case, it would be 10 grams, which is one of these little, how's your father's, little scoops. Remember there was that advert? Just one scoop! Exactly. One scoop you can put in five liters of water. So this is when I say, if you've only got 10 minutes to spare, you've got 10 minutes, You've got home from work, it's been a hectic day, everybody's irritating you, you want to smash the world, <sighs> you get the feeling, okay? Ten minutes, guys, take a watering can, one scoop, in here, give it a bit of a little rock and roar, okay? And water your plants, and you're watering them, and you're feeding them at the same time. Nutri feed is going to give you a great balance of your NP and your K plus some micro elements, which as a liquid means if I water the leaves and the soil, when it hits the leaves, it's still going to go in. Okay? 
because this can also be used as a hydroponic feed. Okay, so it's going to go in through the leaves as well as the soil. Okay, right. So this you're going to do like once a month, preferably once a month, and try and like put one of those reminders on like a birthday calendar or something, you know, one of those things. Okay, the other way that you can use the same product, which is actually works very, very nicely, is if you've got pots as well in the garden, you can use it as a dry feed. So you just literally take some of this and you sprinkle it around, okay? Sprinkle it around, okay? And then give it a good watering, okay? Give it a good watering, and it's important that you give it a good watering because then your nutrition, ha-ha, is going right in there, okay? Isn't this thing new? new? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> it's my little soft spray gardena nozzle. I love it. I love it. Okay, so a bit there. Okay, whilst we're there. Okay, so that is nutrition. Then what you also want to do is give them what we call a little, um, and I always like doing this with my plants. Um, I call it like a little barocca. You know when you're feeling a bit, and you're just not on your A game, um, and then, your mothers would have told you that you're missing something and you must take something, okay? You're missing some, you haven't been eating enough vegetables or whatever. And why? Because if you eat the vegetables, you get a lot of the micronutrients. You get a lot of the good stuff. The stuff that is very, very small amounts that we actually need in order to function as human beings, believe it or not. Um, and the same is exactly with plants. So in terms of a Barocca, use something like this. Kelpak, it's a, a seaweed-based very easy guys very very simple um, and it can literally be done like this it is very very easy to use it's 10 mils into one liter of water in fact their cap <laughs> their cap has actually got measurements on it <laughs> which is quite cute i thought that was ingenious there 10 20 mils you can use the cap okay or you can use this little guy over here so literally it's 10 mils in you can see lovely green stuff in there, close it up, okay, and give it a good shake. And as you're watering, and you're going to see where this is going to come into play just now, as you're watering, so you're feeding. And of course, you could also put this into a watering can because then you're giving them all those good micronutrients and their little Barocca for the day, okay. And this you would do once a month, once every two weeks if you want. You can't overdo it, okay, you can't overdo it. All right, so let's put that over here. Okay, so that's feeding, guys. That is feeding. Very, very important. Um, now, if we want to get into real detail, let's, let's talk a little bit about watering. Different plants grow, different succulents grow at different times of the year, and certain, if you get really into um, different species, actually, you need to cut back on the watering. I am not going to go into detail about that, but I am going to just say this, that... Plants like Hawarthias, Gasterias, um, your Lithops, you need to pay attention to when you need to let them dry out, okay, and your Conifatums, and when you need to start watering. But all of that is readily available, and if you want to know more, you just drop us, yeah, yeah, you ask us, ask us the question, and we'll help answer it for you, okay, right. Very importantly, what I find the absolute most worst painful experience um, is weeds. Weeds in your succulent pots. And I know you've tried to do this because I have as well. You're like, oh, there's a weed in here. Hold on, I'm just going to get it out. And you stick your big grubby paw in here and you break a leaf. <sighs> mm. Yes, you've done that. I know you have because I have two. So, introduce the longest pair of tweezers you will ever see. You can buy these at specialist gardening shops. Um, go to the bonsai section. They use these a lot. Um, hmm? Oh, pet shops as well. Okay, so what do we use this for? We use it for taking out weeds and not messing up the plants. So, weed here, said weed, get in there, give it a bit of a shake, rattle and roll. Oh, look, out he comes. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I get a lot of these. And this beautiful Hawarthi of mine um, is the clover. And really, they get in right in next to the plant. And 
said, uh, instead of, sometimes you actually have to unpot the plant, and that's really a bit of a hack. So you get in there, you give it a bit of a, uh, a shake, and slowly, oh, come on, baby, come to mommy. Ha! Bah! There it is, out. Okay, so that's weeding. Important to weed, guys, because if you're fertilizing, well, those weeds are going to love the fertilizer as much as your succulent is, and they are going to grow like fire. Okay, so please, weeding is important, so get yourself a pair of these. And um, I can tell you other stories that I do use these things for, um, but I'm not allowed to. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, right. The next thing. Um, is removing of dead leaves. And guys, removing of dead leaves is important. And it's once again one of those exercises that you can do actually while are you on the phone to somebody and you know you're having a chat because you've still got two hands free. And um, you know, some of you might actually walk around with one of those like like selfie sticks and be videoing yourself while you're still talking. But um, I often do this because I'm on the phone and I'm walking because I can't stand still when I'm on the phone and I walk around and I just remove some dead leaves and I'm still on the phone. Yeah, 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 no, no, can't possibly do that. You want me to make what tonight? Pah! You must be mad. Okay, so anyway, goodbye. That was a lovely conversation. Take off the dead leaves. <coughs> because what happens is the dead leaves can harbor pests, cohors, and if they start rotting, okay, then we're in trouble. Okay, then we're in trouble. And the thing is, when you start removing the dead leaves, I want you to do the following. I often just use a pencil. Just a pencil. Get the pencil. Look for where the leaf is. Okay, here's the dead leaf in here. Because if you're going to get in here, and if you just do that, out it comes. Okay. And then, if it's really stuck in there, you can use your little... No! Out it comes. But the pencil just gives you a little bit more leverage and then you can get them out. But it's important to do that. Okay, right, so that's how to get rid of the leaves. Dead leaves, done, easy, nice and therapeutic. Very therapeutic. Um, ask me, ask me, okay? Um, alrighty. Next up, pests and diseases. What can go wrong? Pests and diseases, okay. Um, I'm going to show you some pests and diseases as what can go wrong. Now, if you come in and have a look here, very, very closely, on this little Semper Vivum, and I'm going to also tell you why we get these pests and diseases. We get it because, number one, this plant is stressed. This plant should get planted into a bigger pot because I'm obviously not getting to it to water it enough, especially in the hot days that we've been having. And even although it is a succulent, because I have restricted where it can get its moisture from, um, it, it, needs, it needs care. And on here, we've got mealybug. <sighs> number one, number one pest, mealybug on your succulents. Okay, quite difficult to get rid of. You've got to be quite persistent at it, and you've got to be repetitive. Um, but there certainly are ways of getting rid of it. And... I'm going to show you three different ways of getting rid of mealybug, okay? But I'm also going to show you another common pest in, oh God, don't tell me you jumped off. No, you didn't. Aphids. Aphids, very, very common in succulents, especially when your succulents are flowering. If your echeverias are flowering, guys, all of a sudden you'll see this black mass on the long, beautiful stem below the, the flowers, and you will see ants running up and down, running up and down, running up and down. That's because the ants are harvesting the honeydew from the aphids, and they farm them. Yeah, they farm them. Okay, so of course we know with aphids you can them off, you can spray them off, uh, you can also squish them, but you can also just spray them and get rid of them. Okay, so... Common pests, mealybug, aphids, and the other thing that you could encounter is a red spider. Red spider, if you stress them out like this, being in a pot or in the garden, too hot, too hot, too hot, too hot, too hot, okay? And you'll see this 
little web almost. And sometimes the spiders are so big you can actually see them running. Red spiders breed and, re and make babies every three days. So you've got to nuke them and whack them. Okay, um, because they can take over. Right, so there are quick ways to do it, like this guy over here. This is no more insects, it's a ready to use. And they, they have a very fancy word for that. It's called RTU. It's written on here somewhere. There we go. Where is it? Uh, RTU. What does that mean? It is ready to use. Ah, okay. Which means no mixing, no mess, no fuss. Really simple. Um, we keep these around the garden. It's got an off switch. It's got an on switch. <laughs> <laughs> and all you're going to do is give them a good spray. It's diluted already. Okay, remember with mealybug, you've got to be consistent. Once a week for at least three to four weeks. Aphids on something. Ch -ch -ch, nuke it. Okay, creepy crawlies. So if we're talking aphids, thrips, ants even, you'll know more insects will do. Ballworm. There's a caterpillar that loves eating into the leaves of your echeverias and all you see are the little poop drops okay you can spray it with that as well so that is when you see the things okay and you want an immediate reaction the other immediate reaction that you can use if you're wanting something organic is to use this organocide plus now guys if you open the bottle you will know what it's made from um, we use a lot of this on the roses because um, I know it's not going to hurt the ladybirds, it's not going to hurt the, the little skinks that are running around there. Whew! Portuguese. Oh, mamma mia. Just garlic bread infused. What is it made from? Canola oil, garlic, and pyrethrum, which is harvested from the chrysanthemum flower. Organic. Okay? This is an organic product, and that's why we, we like it. Um, I'll buy this by the litre. True story. Um, so what can you use it on? It, you can use it on ants, aphids, thrips, white flower, mealy bug. Um, it really does cover a lot. Uh, I would recommend that you do not spray flowers with it. Do not spray the flowers, because if, you, if the little um, bees in that are going to come in there, although this will not harm bees, but it will deter them from coming there if you spray the flower. Okay, so, so don't spray, but this is fantastic for this kind of application. If you're wanting something a bit more long-term, all right, you can get what we call a systemic. Now, a systemic is much like an antibiotic. We take the pill, shops, swallow it, it goes in, shoo -hoo -hoo -hoo, and it's all in our system, okay, through every cell, and it fixes us. This plant care, is what we call a systemic and a contact insecticide, which means that whether you spray it, whether you pour it on and it goes into the soil, it is going to last for a long time, okay? So your application is less, which does make it more convenient for long term. Okay, so you can dilute this into a watering can, into a spray bottle, and you can spray and you can drench the soil but you know that you've got a long-term kind of barrier against those baddies. Does that make sense? Okay, right. So that is Jojos and Nunus. Okay, Jojos and Nunus, right? I need a quick sip of water. Next thing that can go wrong. Mm. Okay, overwatering. Gosh, I know we love our plants. I know we love them and a little bit more, a little bit more. This is all going to be very closely linked to the soil mix that I'm going to share with you in a few minutes' time. But overwatering, what are the signs of overwatering? This is a typical sign of overwatering. And I know why. I know exactly. I've been watching this plant, and it's because my soil mix is wrong, which means the other plants around it are very healthy, very, very healthy. But this guy, I didn't use the right soil mix. And you see this, this mush, you see that there? See, it's like, it's like squishy. It's squishy, it's revolting, it smells, okay? This rotting off here, that rotting off. There it is, here's a perfect one, look at this. Ugh, and it stinks. Ugh, it's like smelly toes, okay? This rotten, that is too much water. 
just too much water. Very, very simple. So our mixture and our, our soil needs to be exceptionally well drained. Very, very important. Oh, the other insect that I forgot to tell you about is, of course, the lovely slug. Slugs. Do you see this eaten leaf over here? Exhibit A. Perfect example of slugs. Remember, these things are juicy. They're full of moisture. They're full of nutrition. Man, the slugs are going to devour them. Always make sure you check around the garden. One way to do it, very, very easily. Tonight, when you get back from work, or as the sun is setting, just take the hose pipe, sprinkle, sprinkle, just a little bit. Go inside, wait for a couple of minutes, half an hour, come back out with the torch. Ha ha. If you've got snails, you'll know because they've come out to party. Okay? They love it. When there's a bit of moisture, they come out to eat. Okay, so that is problems. Okay, so now let's get on to how do we make more and repotting. Okay, so guys, I'm going to need this. Now, there are a couple of other problems that can go wrong, and I'm going to give you an example of this right away, and, and they are the following. All right, let's get all this stuff out the way here so we've got a bit more space. Let's get this bad boy over here. All right, and let's get you out the way. Okay, now, um, guys, what etiolation, exhibit A, perfect exhibit. What does that mean? What's etiolation? It means that the plants are not getting enough um, sun and they are stretching. They are stretching, looking for light. Um, and this is such a perfect example of it. Take a look here. These Hawarthias, these Hawarthias are meant to look like, like this. They're meant to look flat, chubby, like little, little, little fat fingers. They're meant to look like this, but look what they're looking like. Okay, because they're stretching. They're stretching, they're looking for light, which means that it needs more light. And I know why, because I've put this at the bottom of the shelf, and I forgot about it. Absolutely. Same with this guy. Look, he's stretching, okay? He's stretching, he's looking, and you notice that the internodes, that is the space between the leaves, has got longer, okay? Longer. Look at what it should look like. No space between the internodes. Do you see that? Whereas these that are looking for the light, long spaces between the internodes. Okay, but don't stress, we can fix all this. This is all very, very fixable. Um, and in between fixing, you get to make more. Okay, so let's do the first thing, which is nice and basic. If, for instance, you are finding that you've got something like this, how are you going to deal with it? Well, I'm going to show you exactly how. And for that, I'm going to be using my awesome little balcony kit. Guys, this, I've got one in here. I've got one in my one potting shed, and I've got one at the top. Why? Because everything lives in there, and I don't lose stuff. Yeah. I know you lose stuff. Yeah, I do too. Sometimes the secretary ends up in the compost heap, you know. Um, this is called the City Balcony Kit. Um, and it's got everything that I need right here. So um, I'm not going to need the little fork, um, but it can live there. But the lid, the lid acts as a scorpy. <laughs> okay, but, but hold on, hold on. Let's get to the point here. So, secateurs. All right, if you've got a long etiolated, elongated, right, get your pair of secateurs, nice and sharp, and the good thing is when you are buying secateurs, guys, please do this, do not go and buy the biggest one, okay, biggest is not always best, especially for ladies, okay, because our hands are not as big as guys' hands, okay, and sometimes, and you might have found that you've got a pair of secateurs, and when you open it, it's actually quite uncomfortable, but you can get secateurs that only open to a certain way, and they've got different settings, depending on what you want to cut. 
So now I'm only cutting little things, so I don't need a lopper. No, I'm just going to be putting it on that little setting. So all we're going to do is we're going to chop, 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 chop there, chop here, okay? And there are three little babies, okay? And what we can do now is this. And I want to show you how we do it because this is exactly what we have done here. So I would then chop that, okay, right? I would take these lower leaves off. And when you take lower leaves off, guys, it's important that you go sideways. And hear it go. You must hear the little crack, okay? And then all you do is you take these and you can just pop them anywhere so that they can dry. You want them to what we call callus. You want it to get a little scab on the end. It must get a little scab. And you can do it various ways. I mean, you can just literally leave it on the counter there, as long as it's out of direct, harsh sunlight. Now, these were from an echeveria that looked similar to this plant. We cut them. They've calloused. Can you see there? They were sitting on a piece of wire like that. Okay. And they've now started forming roots. Ha! Huh. Look at that, new plant. I can now take this and I can plant it in a pot. Good to go, all right. So that's one way, all right? That's one way. So let's put these over here. All of these little leaves that I have been dealing with, that, that I broke off over there. Oh, no, 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 we're not throwing those away. Caramba, no, no. What are we gonna do with those? Oh, I'm coming back in a second, is this. There are different ways. So take a look here. Let me just put that over there. There are different ways of dealing with the leaves. Now, this way is, is one way of, of rooting. You literally take the leaf, pop it into a tray like this, and look what's happening. Guys, it is a miracle. Look at that. Baba roots. Baba roots. Baba roots. From here, we then take them and we take them to what I call the next step, which is planting them into individual little cavities like this. And these were planted about a month ago. And I want to show you the beautiful roots. Oh, caramba. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Okay, so from leaves, like that. And I'm gonna show you another way with leaves very, very quickly. Okay, so with leaves, we're gonna do the following. Now, I want to show you this. This is, we grew these directly from leaves straight in this tray. So we didn't even go this step. We didn't go to this step over here, which you saw there. We didn't do that step. What we did was the following, but now it's important that you get your mix right. Okay, so when we're talking about mixes, if you are going to be creating a mix for any of your uh, succulent cuttings, germination, um, there are various ways that you can go. Now, if you want to go like the Rolls Royce, okay, this is Rolls Royce, you can use something called pumice, uh, which you can pick up at your local garden center, pumice and akadama. Now, in this, pumice and akadama were mixed. 50-50 ratio, okay? And that was used for germination. Or you can do the following. This stuff is a bit expensive. Um, so if you're trying this out, like for the first time, you don't need to go like wild. Just you can do what I'm gonna do now, okay? And it is a very, very simple method, guys. And um, I've used it with huge success. And in here, I've got some plain potting soil, all right? And what I've added, is a little secret ingredient. <laughs> These are white stones. It's small white gravel that you can either pick up at your local garden center or you can go to your local pool shop and it's called koi gravel. Basically, it's the gravel that you put in your swimming pool filtration system. You get different grades and this size is called koi gravel. It's slightly bigger. And all I'm going to do is mix this up 
And you'll notice I'm using my very cute little trowel here. Okay. Mix this up. And because what the akadama does, what this stuff does, this stuff is amazing in holding moisture, but not holding too much that it doesn't drain. Okay, so in space of that, what I do is, is I add a little bit of, where did you go, of vermiculite. I just add a bit of vermiculite into here. Okay, so now that'll take care of the, the moisture thing. Okay, and there are hundreds of mixes, guys. This is just my mix, but I've got like four or five different mixes that I use, um, depending on the budget and uh, what I've got available at the time. But this will do the job. This will absolutely do the job. So um, what we're going to do is, let's do it in this tray over here. I'm going to take a bit of this, okay? And please, I'm going to take this one step forward in a few seconds on your repotting. Okay, so there we have it, okay? You can even use a seedling mix. Also works very, very well for this. Um, a very fine seedling mix. And what we do is, okay, there it is. We take our leaves. And I'm actually going to just grab a few bigger leaves to make life easier for you um, so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Just notice here when I am removing it, I'm doing it sideways, please. Sideways. Okay, but don't stress about that. I'm going to show you here. Nice clean cut. Now you take some sticks, put a little stick there, okay, and I'll show you why in a second. And I'm going to put a little stick there. Bamboo, cut up, okay. Take your Echeveria leaf and you rest them there. Okay. The leaf, the stick is now holding it so that when you put it in, because I know you've tried to do this and you've tried to bury it and it falls over, <laughs> so the stick does the job. You can even just make a little channel there. But notice, look at that. They just go in and sit there perfectly. And I've just put them on the surface, literally just on the surface. Okay? Then what you do is, and here's the trick. This is the trick. Vermiculite. Cover them with a bit of vermiculite. And then you water. Because if those guys dry out, the little main roots and that little plant that's trying to form will go through too much stress and they will, they will die. Um, so that helps to keep moisture in brilliantly, brilliantly. And I will show you a tray that we used exactly that method with. Here are the little sticks. It's held up these little leaves. In fact, these are desperate for transplanting, but they help for those original little leaves uh, from falling over and look at the great job that it's done. Fantastically. Okay, so let's get to repotting and how do we do it? Because we've always got to do a little bit of work and care um, with our plants and this is going to be very, very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you our original potting mix that we had, which was this stuff over here. So this was our that mix that I showed you, that we used now, now, now. So it's basically the koi gravel potting mix, okay? And the coarseness of the stone does such a good job. And you're going to ask me how much you're going to use. If you're using a five liter bucket, okay, of potting soil, I would use half a bucket of stone as a ratio. So one bucket of potting soil to half a bucket of stone. And you're going to mix this in. Okay? You are not going to add in the vermiculite now. That was for when you're doing your leaf cuttings. Okay? Um, always a good thing to add in a little bit of nutrition. Okay? And for the nutrition, I'm going to use wherever I put it. Where did I put it? Huh? Uh, oh, wow, look at me. Hmm. Now, you can either use some organic pellets, put a handful in, um, or take some of this dry mixture, sprinkle it on. Um, either way, an organic fertilizer also does the job brilliantly. Um, and we're going to take this guy now. Look at it. Oh, caramba, eyeball shame. No, man. This poor thing is climbing out the pot. It's got babies. 
It's got a whole lot of things happening over here. Uh, so uh, says I've got no time left, but I am going to persevere and finish this. Um, so what are we going to do here? We've got lots of babies, so we're going to take these babies off and we are going to make more babies the way I showed you a little bit earlier. So get these babies out, okay? Look at it. I mean, it's literally just coming out the pot. Oh, shame. Mummy. And there's a mess going on here. So we get rid of the mess, but out of this, whew, I've already got a whole lot of plants happening, okay? Now we can open this up a bit. Okay, and you can see it's already starting to form some root hairs. So I've got two options here. One, I could chop it off there and I could wait for this to callus and then replant it. Or, or, instead of putting the plant through so much stress, what I could do is just take it up one more notch. Just one more notch, okay? So loosen a bit of the soil over here. Take some crocs. Remember what are crocs? They're the terracotta pots that you that fell and broke or that the cat pot knocked over the pot and you take a hammer and you give it a good whack okay and you pop those in at the bottom because this is all about drainage all about drainage we take a bit of our beautiful mix our little trowel and we pop it in okay you see it's coarse it's coarse it's well draining that's what we want okay and we take this baby, and now because he's been growing at an angle, oh, I don't know where he was going off to, okay, we're going to take him and I'm going to pop him in here. Pop him just like that, okay. Right, hold him. Get this to the side. A little bit more of our mix. Now, when you are doing this, you'll notice that I only filled the pot halfway up, okay. Now, I'm taking my mix and I'm adding a bit. And I'm adding a bit, and then I take the back end of my trowel and I just give it a little nya nya nya, firm it in, okay? Firm it in so that you are getting the support that you need. And now, because I've done that firming halfway through, my plant is gonna stand. Mm hmm, see that? Okay, get that in, all right? Nice and simple. Of course, what you could do whilst you're waiting for this to grow. And literally, it could be as simple as this. <laughs> snap, snap. Wait for this to dry a bit. Wait for it to dry. And you could literally do that. You could literally just pop it in like that. And <laughs> that, my friends, is how you repot. Nice and simple. Um, very, very easy. And... Of course, as usual, I've made the most horrendous mix, but the beauty about it is that I can very, very, very quickly, quickly clean it up um, and put stuff away so that you're not like me and lose things because I'm forever, forever losing secateurs, um, whatever it is in the garden. I do even, I am, tend, I am known to hide them in pots so that other people, certain other people in the house can't find them, um, but nevertheless, I can put everything away again in my special little hidey hole and close it up. And that is that. Hmm. You could even put some camouflage in front there if you really wanted to. Okay. Finally, are succulents only bought as plants? No, of course they're not. They are the most beautiful seeds that should be sown now, now from February until April. I would hold on on these, which are called Book by Fahis. Oh my goodness. And in next month's issue of The Gardener, you are going to see exactly how to do it, but really it's nice and easy. Book by Fahis. If you are wanting the most spectacular display, you can sow them directly into the garden. This is a little succulent. That is a little succulent. Portulacarias, portulaca, beg your pardon. You get doubles, you get singles. Love the bright sun. Great for hanging baskets. You know them, you've seen them. They're bright, they're in your face. And they are happy. They are happy, happy flowers. 
Um, finally, guys, I know I've got to no questions. I have answered nobody, but I promise you that I will get to it a bit later. But this has been such a big topic, and I really wanted to share as much as I could with you. Um, but finally, do 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 That's me making very important noises. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our 20th anniversary collector's edition of The Gardener and Detainee. Folks, I hope that you've been following us on Facebook and seen our journey, especially for creating this most spectacular magazine. It's 20 years of reflection on gardening. It's giving thanks to those people who have helped us along the way. It's giving thanks to our advertisers, to our supporters. 20 years ago when I picked up the phone, and I just left the garden centre and I was a little pipsqueak. And I picked up the phone and I said, I'm starting a magazine, will you support us? Are you in? And the answer was yes. My grateful thanks and gratitude to all of you, to you guys, our readers. You make this happen and we do this for you. We do it for you and it makes us excited and it gives us purpose and joy. And I hope that you enjoy this beautiful gold itch, how's your father, magazine, um, which is in celebration of 20 years of gardening. And of course, what would a birthday be without a spectacular prize? There is a prize valued at over 75,000 Rand. Guys, it includes Hampers from Atlantic, Stark Airs, Mayford, Gardena, um, tools, drills, power tools, you name it, it's there. Plus, 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 a visit to our garden for a couple, for two people to come and have lunch and a walk around our garden um, and spend an afternoon with us and hopefully get inspired and some great gardening ideas. And all you have to do is find Dora. Door of the Garden Gnome is hidden in these pages. Find her and you too could be a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so much for lending us your ears and your hearts. Thank you to Stark Airs, Macro Home and Garden, um, and to all of you that have been watching. Uh, remember to catch more videos on Garden Tube and to follow us on Facebook um, and Insta and all those other feeds that everybody else does. We do too. Anyway, uh, guys, that's all from me. Mwah, mwah. Lots of love. Take care of you and yours. And as always, most importantly, happy gardening. The Gardener Masterclass was proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, the foremost African commercial and home gardening specialist of globally sold premium seed and innovative gardening solutions, growing together for a sustainable future. And Macro Home and Garden. Visit macro.co.za to find out more about our range to solve most common gardening problems. macro.co.za Your favorite gardening magazine, The Gardener and Detainee, turned 20 this February and we're celebrating with a birthday collector's edition featuring the most loved gardens, stories from our gardening gurus, timeless garden plants and our best DIYs. There's also a giant gardening hamper to be won valued at over 75,000 Rand. Celebrate with us and get your collector's edition from leading retailers or online at thegardener.co.